How's it going? And welcome back to another episode of the Road to World series. Today is cool because it is the first time that I'm really able to test my ankle since my injury. Uh, so I have the, a race, it's called the John Sims race, um, and it's a marathon race. So that means rather than being in my wild water boat, I'm going to be in my K1, um, which is a bigger test of my ankle than being in my wild water boat uh, because you really have to push in a K1, whereas in the wild water boat, there's the ability to not really push that hard on the pedals. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's no longer in the brace which is really cool that's uh, a big step for me so I'm able to paddle now pretty freely uh, and we'll see how we go I'm looking for maybe a top five finish because the last couple paddles that I've done my fitness hasn't really felt like it's back there yet so I'll be happy with top five it's a pretty stacked start list there's about 12 guys on there that will really be gunning for the lead pack so I'm gonna put the GoPro on my boat and uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Well, we pause a beat, pause a beat, pause a beat. Hey, my current situation ain't my final destination. That's just how I see it. Only the rest ain't isolated. Only the rest ain't isolated. Only the rest ain't isolated. The cool thing about this race is that it's actually only two kilometers downstream from where my house is. So literally I'll paddle down that way and then I'll be at the start of the race. So I don't even have to drive anywhere. I probably won't film much between now and the start um, just so I can prepare myself, but I'm gonna chuck the GoPro on the back of the boat and I'm gonna film the race and you'll be able to see what happens. So yeah. All right, so I thought a fun idea would be if I was to commentate a little bit of my race because it's all good and well for me to show you all the footage and stuff, but if you don't know what's going on, then that's not as fun. So I'm going to add a bit of voiceover to this and hopefully it gives you a better picture of what was going through my head and um, how I was feeling during the race. And yeah, I just thought that would be a fun idea. All right, so we start off here at the start of the race. Um, at this point, I'm pretty out of position. The starter says go. Um, everyone has bunched up on this left side for some reason, and I'm the only one. I've got about five boats in between me that I had to clear that was over on the right side. So as you can see here, I'm still sprinting at full pace and I'm moving over, trying to push Dave back out of uh, position on Josh's wash there. Josh Kippen just won the uh, Open Men's Marathon national title, so he was always going to be the one to beat in this race, uh, although I knew that was never going to happen for me. As we speed it up here, I'm in the lead of the race at this point. Everyone is uh, working off of me. Um, and now Josh comes through, burns everyone, and I try and go with him here, but... As you'll see in a minute, that was never going to happen. I was never going to be able to hold that sort of pace uh, for that long. So I stayed with him for a bit, and as you can see here, I've given up on it. So you got Jeremy Alderson on the left side there. He's a waist sprint paddler, and then Corin Longwood, who uh, is recovering from COVID still, but he's a very good WA marathon paddler. So at this point, I'm just waiting for the chase pack to come through, uh, saving my breath a bit. And they come through here. We've got Harry Hewitt leading them. He's a very strong ocean paddler. So I just hook onto his right side. And then you got Mitchell Tamblin on the left-hand side there. Another waist paddler. And um, Dave Burdett in the uh, diamond. And he is going to world champs with me. So my goal from there was to beat him. <laughs> so as you can see there, I pushed him out of the out of the V, out of the diamond, and I'm now in the best position as we pick up Corin, who had fallen off the front two. Um, so the diamond's the optimum position because you get the most wash advantage from it. 
So at this point I'm coming through to lead our pack um, and this is about the halfway point in the race and this is where I'm starting to feel really fatigued and they let me lead for a bit here um, but then Corin notices some weed on my rudder so he goes to fish that off just here you see his boat come up and then Harry Hewitt on the right hand side here he notices that and he takes advantage of it and does a big burn um, and as you can see I try to go with him here but I've just done a lead so I'm feeling pretty exhausted at this point and I really don't have the lactic tolerance to stick with that sort of pace um, so I'm still trying to get up onto his wash but at this point really I know I've had to concede that group Corrin's able to make his way back up there um, and yeah at this point I'm on my own for a while until these ski paddlers come through trying to drop my heart weight rate somewhat I'm sitting on about 190 beats per minute most of the time so just taking advantage of that short break and at this point I know as long as I stuck with these guys until close to the finish um, I'd be able to have enough of a gap over Dave and the other open K1s behind me um, so yeah I was happy enough here to let them drop me and come across the line in fifth in my category and also tenth overall so yeah, not too bad. Cool, so I hope that gave you a bit of insight into how my race went. Um, as you can see, my body has suffered a little bit after having my ankle injury and my taper week before that, sort of came at a bad time, but that's all right. We're gonna get back up to uh, peak fitness. We got four weeks to do it, so as long as I keep on smashing out my sessions, we should get there, hopefully. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Current situation ain't my final destination. That's just how I see it.